Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad, and today I'm going to show you a Power BI architecture for multi-developer environment that you can use, um, what components you would need and how these components would work together. Let's talk about it and see how you can build this using data sets, shared data set, data flow, data mart, combined all of these together. Let's check it out. <music> Uh, I have uh, I have talked about Power BI architecture in some sessions, some speaking engagements, and different uh, uh, different uh, videos. Uh, most of those have been before Power BI Data Mart came in, so I thought better to just do a video talking about that architecture all in one place, and also talk about how Data Mart plays a role in this with these new changes. So talking about Power BI, Power BI architecture, the first thing you need to understand is that why uh, we uh, don't do everything in one Power BI file. What are challenges if we build everything in one Power BI file? Because usually when you start building Power BI solution, you would start doing everything in one file because it's so simple. You open Power BI desktop, you connect to the source, you get data, you do the data transformation, you then start creating relationship between your tables after loading the data into Power BI, writing calculations using DAX, visualizing it, everything happens in one file. It makes it so simple for everyone. So that is how most of the Power BI projects starts. However, maintaining it like this would not be easy in the future because um, later on you might need to create a solution that is totally for a different group of people. They shouldn't have access to the same data that this group of people have access. It's like totally different data, totally different users, um, different things. But some of the transformations might be things that you would want people to work on it um, um, the same way. Like for example, you created the product and you want to use product in this other file as well. Another situation is that um, what if you are not the only developer in your team? You have some others, like for example, someone is good at building visualization, you are good at building data transformations. How do you work together in this environment? You cannot share the PBIX file between yourself because if you do that, then each of you have a different version of the file and then how do you merge these different versions? Power BI is not really designed for this kind of multi-development uh, Power BI desktop is not designed for this multi-development environment. If you want to use it, you should not be using just Power BI desktop. You should be using some other tools. So uh, I have listed some of the options here. These are options that, um, these are some of these challenges that you might have when you build everything in one single file. So doing everything in one file is not good. So what should we do then? What is the situation? So let me give you some examples and then I'll talk about what are the components to use. In this video, I'm not going to show you any demos. I'm just going to talk about what are the situations and how things can be designed differently. Let's say you have built a sales Power BI file and that might include customer table. It might include um, sales the fact table, the date table, um, product table, things like that. And um, you have built it. It took, let's say, three, four months to build really fantastic dashboards. You delivered it to the sales team. Now, after a few months, inventory teams comes and say, well, I want also, like we, we want also a inventory uh, report. And this is a totally different data, totally different audience. So you are not really combining that in the same file. You create a different file. But in that file, what are your tables? Well, it's inventory, so you have a warehouse table, you have an inventory movement fact table, you also have a product table, and you also have a date table. So product table and date table <coughs> are kind of um, used in both of these. So what do you do? Do you go and copy and paste those uh, codes from the sales PBIX file into this? That's not a good idea because then later on when you want to change it, you have to go and change it in multiple places. You don't have a single source of truth, single version of the date or product table that you can reuse in multiple files. And the reason for that is that the data transformation is embedded inside your Power BI file. If you separate that, if you move that layer outside of Power BI using something like Dataflow, then it would make your job much easier. Now, what is Dataflow? Dataflow is data transformation in the cloud. Uh, it uses Power Query engine to do data transformation. It connects to many sources. It does 
all the transformations you can do in Power Query, most of it actually, uh, Power Query in Power BI Desktop, and then it loads it into Azure Data Lake Storage or Dataverse, which you can use Power BI to get data from that. So using this, you are actually decoupling your ETL layer. That means the solution uh, we've been talking about that we have Sales PBI XFall and Inventory PBI XFall, they don't need to have a copy of Power Query script for the date table, for the product table, date and product table, or any other shared dimensions or shared tables between these can be processed using the data flow in one place and then these files using that. Separating that in another layer in the data flow would help a lot because then you have one place to change if you want to change that transformation and all other files, the next refresh of the metadata, they would get this change, right? So we have separated the ETL layer using data flow. Now, I have explained about data flow a lot in many other videos. I'm not going into the details of data flow. Now, what is the next? So data flow is part of it, but there are things that you implement in Power BI which are considered as modeling. <clears throat> and what is considered as modeling? When you do data transformation, when you load data into Power BI, you still have different tables. You create a relationship between these different tables. Relationship can have attributes like what field to what field, what is the direction of relationship, uh, is it one to many, many to many, those kind of different types of relationships. You can define hierarchies. You can go to every field and set some formatting. For example, you can say this field has to be sorted by that field, or you can say this is a hidden field. You can change uh, a lot of other things, the formatting of the field, and you can write tax calculations. This can be measures, tables, calculated columns. You can do a lot of these. These are all part of modeling. Data flow does not support that because data flow is all about power query and data transformation. So where these are restored, these are part of the data set in Power BI. If you build everything in Power BI, then we have the same problem. Let's say you want to have someone building visualization on your report and you are at the same time writing calculations that wouldn't work because you are all working with the same file. What you can do instead is use a concept called shared data set. And again, I have videos about that as well. So I strongly recommend go to check out those videos as well. Uh, shared data set is a data set that is shared between multiple files. When you create a shared data set, now your shared data set can come from the data flow or it can come from any other sources and it can be used across multiple reports. Those reports would connect to this data set and build reports on top of it. This way, however, you separated the data modeling layer. That means when you write a DAX calculation, multiple reports can use that DAX calculation. You don't have to repeat um, that calculation in multiple places, which would cost maintenance, a lot of maintenance in the future. So the second layer is actually the data modeling layer using shared data set. Now the third la layer of the, of the design we are going to talk about, and I'm going to show you the whole architecture in a second, is a thin report. What is thin Power BI reports? Thin Power BI reports are Power BI reports that doesn't have a data set by itself. Like when you publish a PBIX file to the website, normally it's a data set and a report. Thin report doesn't have a data set because it is already connected to a data set that is already published in a website. Uh, it's pretty much like a Power BI report with live connection. Um, you can connect to any Power BI data set using that. And when you connect it to that, you can build any visualizations you want. You can also do like few modeling things such as report level measures and things like that. But mainly these are for building visualization. You can also use Excel with get data from Power BI data set or analyzing Excel. That's another name for that also. Paginated reports, Power BI paginated reports. These are all different types of visualizations, dashboards, reports that you can build and they can all be getting data from a shared data set. So the architecture I'm talking about is a three layer architecture. The first layer of this architecture is a um, data flow architecture. This is the ETL extract transform load um, layer of the Power BI solution. This is where you get data from different sources. You do the data transformation using Power Query Engine and you load that into Azure Data Lake Storage or Dataverse. These are uh, at the moment the storage options for data flow. Then the shared data model, which is Power BI shared data set, can be getting data from those uh, data flows 
And um, here is where you build relationships, calculations, and all the modeling uh, set up, such as hierarchies and anything else. And then you can have Power BI uh, reports with live connection, analyze in Excel, paginated reports, all of those connected to your shared data set. Having these three different layers of architecture is um, has a lot of benefits. Um, layering your uh, architecture has a lot of um, advantages. These are only a few. For example, when you decouple these layers, that means you are actually reusing uh, your components rather than recreating them. Instead of redoing that dimension table, instead of copying the logic for that dimension table, which costs a lot of maintenance, you are actually decoupling the data preparation layer using data flow. Um, Data flow is not another tool. It's part of Power BI. If you work with Power BI, you are familiar with Power Query. So it is the same Power Query. Uh, shared data set is not something outside of Power BI. It's part of Power BI. You are still writing DAX. You are still working with M in Power Query when you do the data flow. So it's all within your Power BI skill set that you build this multi-layered architecture. When it is multi-layered, that means that users can work with it at the same time. Like for example, someone who is good at data flow and data transformation power query builds this layer. Someone who is good at uh, DAX relationships builds the data model. And those who are good at visualizations build the report style design of it. You are reusing all the components, which would lead to minimum redundancy, maximum consist consistency and uh, lower maintenance approach. So definitely this is something that I would suggest it. Even if you are a single person, so it's not really multi-developer environment, it's like you as the only developer, I would still suggest this because then you can reuse some of the components. Like you go and build your next Power BI file and reala you realize that some of these um, transformations are needed over there. So if you have built a data flow, you can go and use it over there. Now, all of these are using data flow, uh, shared data set, and Power BI reports with live connection. This is before Power BI Data Mart came in. Now, Power BI Data Mart is one of the new, most recent additions into the Power BI ecosystem. This is a really helpful option because it adds a, another layer inside this. So first, Power BI Data Mart actually combines data flow and data set, and it also brings uh, storage for that, which is what we call it a data warehouse, but it is uh, Azure SQL database. So you have this data warehouse layer in the middle of that. Now with the normal data flow, your data warehouse is actually your Azure data lake storage. And when I say data warehouse, I mean that the star schema design, you can call it data mart, data warehouse, whatever you might call it, but it's the storage at the moment in Azure data lake, uh, sorry, in Azure SQL database when you use it with Power BI Data Mart. And it comes with all one UI to manage it. So you don't really have to go and build data flow in the website and then come and build data set in the desktop, then publish it to the website. Uh, all of these happens actually in one environment. And I have created like four different videos on Power BI Data Mart. I, go, I strongly suggest you go and check it out. So I would suggest to enhance that architecture to be something like this. Now, um, the reason that I didn't suggest it at the first was that um, Data Mart is a premium functionality. So you either need to have premium per user licensing or premium capacity licensing. Any of those licensing you have, then you can use this option. I would suggest it um, and it would give you a lot of benefits. Just consider that Data Mart is very new. So you may um, might want to wait a little bit for this to become generally available. Uh, if you are working with it at the moment, you may expect some, um, some preview, let's say, options that Microsoft is also looking to get some feedback from you. Now, uh, these layers are not just um, some layers, um, like four layer or three layer that I mentioned. These layers can be also expanded. For example, here I'm talking about expanding the data flow layer. Data flow should not be all in one place. Data flow can be also split into multiple layers. Now, these images are coming from the article I wrote for uh, Microsoft Documentation Power Query website a uh, long time ago. Um, the way that I normally build data flows myself is that I don't create everything in 
one set of data flows. I split it into multiple layers. I first create staging data flows. What are staging data flows? The staging data flows are just populating data from the source, only the tables that we need, exactly as is, without any changes, loading it into Azure Data Lake storage or whatever it is. Then on top of it, we would have transformation data flows. And these are data flows that will actually have Power Query transformations on top of it. What this separation of these two would give you? The separation will give you a lot of options. First is that if your data source changes, for example, it was on-premises SQL Server, and for some reason the source system changed to on-premises Oracle, you don't need to come and change all of your data transformations and reload all the data again. You just go and change staging data flows only. Considering that the structure hasn't changed, everything else should follow the same. Uh, you can have your heavy lifting transformations on a different layer than your staging uh, data flow. And transformation data flows can be also in multiple layers. So what I'm suggesting is that the data flow layer, although it looks like one layer in that architecture diagram I showed you at the beginning, it can be actually multiple layers itself, staging data flows, transformation data flows, then transformation on top of transformation data flows using computed entity and things like that. If you have access to premium functionalities in data flow, even if you don't have that still, this is a very helpful design. I would strongly recommend you to do that. That is on the data flow side. On the data set side of it, also you can have a layered design and that is using something called chain data sets. Um, about a year ago, or I think about two years ago, maybe, um, Power BI came with this option that is direct query connection to the Power BI dataset. What that means is that you can have now data sets that are getting data from another data set. The way that it is, is that it is not live connection, it is not import data, it is something called direct query connection to Power BI dataset. That is kind of similar to live connection, but it gives you ability to enhance that model or extend, extend is a better word, extend that model, bring some other data sources, build another layer on top of it. Let's say in some companies, uh, we have like a centric BI um, model designed by the BI team, and then data analysts go and get data from that using the direct query connection to Power BI data set and then bring some other data sources as well. So they have these data sets that are like the second level, the third level, these are called chained data set. Uh, and they can be a lot helpful as well. So that three layer architecture or four layer architecture that I'm talking about, if you use data mart, four layer, if you use um, data flow and shared data set, only three layers. That is not always three or four. Sometimes it might be more like your data flow can be multiple layers, your data set can be multiple layers. The number is not the important thing here, the number of layers. Like I have a design with like 10 layers of architecture. That is not important. The most important thing is that you design it in a way that you can reuse most of these uh, instead of rebuilding it instead of copying and pasting it. So you can have a design which is like three layers and it is uh, really good. You might have a design that is 17 layers, but you still haven't used all of those um, reusability components of it. So always think about it that this work that I have done, this function, this table, this tax expression that I created, how can I reuse it instead of recreating it? So that was everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a how to build a Power BI architecture for your solution. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI.